world is not as you see it. Just as there is light, there is darkness. There is night and day. Have an open mind and let's get into this true life story. This happened somewhere in Africa. There's this community that you can only get to it by walking a long distance or you go with your bicycle or your wooden canoe boat. You cannot access it by vehicle. Cars has never been there up till this day as I'm telling you the story. So in that community, there is this man that is referred to as a strong man. I will try my best as I tell this story to not give too much details. As I was warned by the person that sent in the story. This man that is referred to as a strong man, he had six sons and two daughters. Among his kids, he had two twin boys and the rest followed. In his community, he was referred to as a strong man because they discovered that he was a wizard. And he believed in invoking and conjuring and doing black magic. People were afraid of him. People avoided him. But they knew who he was. So, his six sons, he raised them to be hard-working farmers. Some of them were fishermen. Other ones wanted to go to school to become something else. So he sent them far to where he had relations so they can attend the primary and secondary school there. So he sent out three of his sons to go to school. And when they finished, they came back home. Fast forward many years later, they all found wives, got married, settled down. But at that point, stuff started happening in the community that it was no longer safe for the youths. So most of them were moving to neighboring communities where they had relatives. Or even though they don't have anybody, they just go rent a home and look for a job and just stay there because their community had no peace. So it came to a point where they decided, okay, we are going to go bring some uh, native doctors, which are these, some people call them witch doctors, wizard or whatever. These are traditional people that invoke spirits and they, according to them, they can speak to the spirits and find out stuff. So when they brought these witch doctors, they did their incantations and invoking and conjuring and the black magic thing. And then they started naming people that were causing problem in the community. And this man was also mentioned among the people. So from then they decided, the community decided they were going to banish them or they would take an oath that they will not do any evil or disturb the community anymore. They forced all of them to take the oath after then. The community had some what of some kind of peace. Not fully, they were still doing their evil deeds, but they were not as bold as they used to be. Because they knew what was going to follow if any one of them was caught doing what they said they weren't going to do. And they were also afraid of the oath that they took. So that's how they lived for many, many years. After some years, this man's first daughter, when she got to point, she found a man she wanted to get married to. She got married. They were doing good. She got pregnant. When it was time to put to bed, she passed with the baby in her womb. 
And that was very strange because there was no complication. There was nothing to suggest that that was going to happen. It just happened just like that one day. People from the community believed that her father used her as a sacrifice. Some others believed that he used her head to exchange his head because it is believed that witches and wizards, when they want to pass on, they have the option to change, to extend their life with a newborn baby or a family member. So people believe that that's what he did. He used his daughter and her unborn baby to exchange so he can get longer life. That was a rumor for a while and things went back to normal. They kept on working hard. Some of his children moved away from home to go get jobs but they will always come back. All the struggle, they struggled, none of them was ever successful. Even when their friends were getting good jobs and all of that, they weren't. But they still tried their best to survive. At a point, one of the sons decided, okay, I'm going to settle down, get take a wife and go live in my wife's village. He got married and moved to his wife's village. Now, that really made his father angry. His father called him and said to him, why is it that you're getting married and moving away from home? Why can't you stay here with your family? Why do you have to leave your family here and go and live with the woman? He said, I have better opportunities there I have more jobs as I'm working on my farm. I'm going for fishing and all of that. And people are giving me jobs. But if I stay back in my village, our village is small. Only uh, no access road. We don't have much communication with neighboring community because it's difficult to get to our community. But in my wife's community, I can get more jobs because they have some kind of communication with the neighboring communities. But all of this he explained to his father did not make any sense to the man. But are you surprised? You cannot communicate with the devil. You cannot communicate with evil. This made the father very angry and it went on for months upon months. Back and forth between him and his father. His father was telling him to come back home. He refused. And then one day his father sent a message to him and said, if you do not come back home, whatever happens to you, you take it as that. And he sent a message back to his father. He said, no matter your threat, I will not come back. I will stay where I I am. I will only come to visit, but I will never move back to our community. And then the father said, so be it. The father went took the hot drink, went to the river, and started his incantations. He started walking, calling on the spirits, calling on all the stuff that live under the water, and walking, and walking, pouring the drinks, walking, pouring the drinks. People from his community saw him doing this so many times, but they didn't understand. They just knew that somebody is in trouble. But they didn't know who he had issues with. People in the community did not know that he had problems with his son. But they knew that something was going to happen to someone. This man kept on doing this continuously for weeks. One day, his son woke up in his wife's village, prepared himself, said goodbye to his wife and his children, said he was going to their farm. This is something he has done so many times. He went to the farm, started walking, he finished his walk, he was coming back, he collected some coconuts, fruits and all of that. He was paddling back, eating his coconuts. This was said by people that saw him when he was coming back because a lot of people paddled to their farm, paddled to the market on their canoe boat, their wooden canoe boat. So people saw him going to farm that day and some people saw him coming back, just paddling slowly and eating his coconuts while he was returning. And then all of a sudden, he 
was nowhere to be found. He then returned. So somewhere between his farm and his wife's village, he suddenly disappeared. Now, did I mention that this man, one of his job was to dive in deep waters to get yellow sand for sale. He sells it to people that build houses and all of that. So he was a good swimmer. He also goes for fishing. He has been doing all these things from when he was a little boy. So when his wife didn't see him return that evening, she went around the community asking people if they saw her husband. People that saw him said, of course, we saw him paddling back home. And then she went and reported to the youth. They ring the town crier and everybody went out and searched for him. They started searching the waters because people said they saw him paddling back home. They found his boat, his canoe boat. He had his paddle, the coconut that he was eating, and the food uh, that he harvested that was in the boat. Everything was in the boat, but he was the only one that was not in the boat. Now, the boat didn't look like it had any problem, no struggle, nothing. The boat was just floating, no water in it, nothing. So you cannot even say it capsized, but he was nowhere to be found. When this happened, immediately the wife sent a message and they went to her husband's village and she confronted his father. And they told his father, whatever you have done that made your son to go missing, you better do it again and provide the man or else you're going to lose your life. After they threatened him, he went back to the sea invoked did all he did before and the next day the lifeless body of his son was found